Hello everyone, welcome to Mixed Media Friday and a uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, I know that you haven't seen my videos in about a month and uh, there were some issues that I had first of all with my camera and then with YouTube uploading so they have all been resolved so I'm really excited so you'll see a lot more videos that have kind of been backlogged that I will um, start to upload. But for today, um, I'm going to be creating a two-page spread of um, mixed media uh, art journal page. So I'm going to start with uh, Golden Teal. And uh, I'm just going to apply it on my page randomly, just like this right now. And uh, with a paintbrush, I'm just going to randomly paint. And I want to I want to water it down a little bit, so I am going to spray with some water. Okay, here we go just spraying my page a little bit and it'll just water it down a little bit it'll just help it be a little bit more translucent so I'm doing that and just as you can see on the bottom where I put some water it starts to be a little bit more translucent which I really love and I'm not painting mm -hmm. it all the way and not only that but the water really helps it move which is really really great all right so just like that my dry brush as it dries. I just want to be really rough with it. I don't want to fill all the spots. Okay, just like that. And then I'm just going to clean my brush for one moment. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to use the Hansa Yellow Medium by Golden. And I like these little bottles that are really easy for my videos. I'm going to put random little spots here and there. Okay, and I'm going to use the same brush since I somewhat cleaned it. Somewhat. I'm just cleaning it a little bit more. And it does have some water which I really like. And I'm just spreading it a little bit but what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to be taking a baby wipe. And because it's wet, what I really like is I'm just going to be wiping it and kind of rubbing it throughout my page. Okay. Just like that. And because the teal is not quite dry, I can actually go ahead and even wipe some of it off and creating a really cool effect. And of course your fingers are always the absolute best tool. Better than any brush you can find on the market is your fingers. Okay, so it's really nice and bright. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this and come back. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the six by six template by the Crafters Workshop and it's called Mini Chicken Wire Reverse. And it is one of my favorites. You guys have seen me use it a lot. And I'm going to go ahead and place it randomly throughout my page. And I'm going to take, this is a Quinacadrone uh, Magenta by Steve uh, Stevenson. And I'm just going to take a sponge brush and I'm just going to apply it right to my brush. And I want it kind of thick. I want it to stick out a little bit. So I'm going to apply it just like so. And some spots will be lighter than others. And you really, with the stencil, you really want to get in there. Otherwise, you are not going to go through the holes very easily. So um, you might want to just get in there first in the little holes and then kind of pounce it. Okay. That would be my recommendation because, as you can see, not all of them will show up. Okay. So, and I love the way that the stencil is designed, that it's not a square. So however you lay it down on your page, it will look totally random. 
right? And then I'm just going to do a little piece down here as well, and I'm just going to apply a little bit more. And I don't want too, too much. Ta-da. Ooh, I love that little blotch. It's kind of funky. And then here, I'm just going to apply one right there. And I do have quite a bit on the brush and on the stencil, so I want to, I want to use that as well, which is pretty funky. And this side will be a little bit lighter. Fabulous. Just like that. Okay. And I'm thinking maybe I'll do a little bit on the top right here. I'm just going to grab a little bit more. Fabulous. I really like that look. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this and I'll be right back. Next, I'm going to take this color. This is called Peony Pink by Americana. And I'm going to apply a little bit right here. And what I want to do actually is I actually want to water it down quite a bit. So I'm going to take some water and apply it just like that. And then take my brush. I'll use this one. And I just really want it to water down. It might be a little bit too watery. Might have to apply just a little bit more pink. I do. I want it a little bit thicker. It's like I change my mind as I create. I want it thick enough that it's kind of like a runny paste. Okay, you don't want it to be like super watered down. Okay, but watered down enough that it kind of runs and drips down. Okay, that kind of consistency. So I'm just playing with it until it's blended with all the water. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to move this to the side a little bit and I'm going to apply this to the top of my page. Okay, just like that. And just like this. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Just randomly. All right. Just like so, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my spray bottle, as I drop half the stuff here, and I'm gonna help it along by spraying a little bit more water, and it allows the drips to really go down the page. Okay, just like that. And usually I'd have a cloth underneath, but I'm not too worried right now. And this is how you just help it along. And then with your brush, you can help it some more. Just kind of drip down. And it'll just kind of follow the water, right? If you find that it's a little bit too thick, just help it. It'll go down. Just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. I really like the look of this. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this, and I'm gonna continue to do the rest of the sides. But I'm just going to give this a quick dry because then I want to create some drips kind of coming diagonally this way. And then maybe a few more down here as well. So I'm going to give this a quick dry and I'll be right back. Okay, it's not completely dry, but I'm okay with that. Um, what I'd like to do next is I'm going to kind of tip it the other way, or diagonally I should say. And I'm going to just put my cloth this way. And I'm going to grab the bottom of my page. And I'm not. I'm hoping that you can see this. And I'm gonna apply drips. They're gonna are going to be coming down diagonally down the page. Okay. Just like that. I don't want them to be straight down. I want them to come diagonally. Just a few. Just like this and keep helping it to go whichever way you want it to go. And of course, if you don't quite like the way it's going, just spray with a little bit more water and it'll keep dripping. Okay, just like that. 
and they'll spider a little bit more. Perfect. Okay, so I love that. I'm just gonna wipe some of these off because I don't like them that much, just like that. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and dry this completely and then I'll do the next page. Now that that's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing, but on this side of the page. And I'd like it to come down, drip down the page just a bit. Okay, just like that. And I'm not gonna add a whole lot of water because I actually want it to be quite dark. Ooh, I like that little splash marks. Okay, and I kinda like that random one. So I'm gonna do the same thing here just randomly down the page, just like that. That's really, really cool. All right, just like so. And I'm gonna keep allowing it to drip. Perfect. And I want it literally just like that. I don't want too much more. The only thing I wanna do is I wanna put a little bit up here, but if I'm gonna put some up here, if I tip it, they're gonna kinda drip down, so I'm gonna have to dry this first and then come back. I'm gonna continue to do some drips in a moment, but the next thing that I'm going to use is, I'm gonna use some um, Galleria Mars Black acrylic paint, and I'm gonna grab another one of my foam brushes because they work really, really well. And this is a little bit of a thicker black, which is really great. It's not like a fluid acrylic, so it will be nice and dark on this page and I just want to put some random the arrows and this is using a another stencil by the crafters workshop and I'll post the link to my blog where I'll have all the details of all the products that I've used okay since I don't have the packaging in front of me so here's some arrows going down and then I'm going to do some going this way on my page and lift. Awesomeness, awesomeness. I'm going to do a couple over here, not too many, but just enough. Because I think they look fabulous. Ooh, cool. Very, very funky. And maybe a couple right here so this side doesn't get lonely. Okay? We don't want it to be lonely. That's my theory okay all right perfect I'm gonna go ahead and dry this so that if I apply something else the arrows are not gonna start to run I'm gonna use one of my favorite stencils and this is the um, the brick stencil by the crafters workshop and as you know this is probably my most used stencil and I am gonna use the teal again and I'm gonna use my finger I just want to see how this turns out so Sometimes art journaling is just about trying something out, you know? And I'm gonna apply some just right on the page. I'm being brave, you guys, be very brave. And I really love the transparency of the golden fluid paints, which is why I'm using it right now for this. So just like that. And ooh, I love that. I love that it's just enough of a hint to give it a little something, okay? And I'm going to apply it right here on this corner as well. And as you can see, I'm being very rough with it. I am not trying to really blend it all the way, so I'm being very random. Just like that. It didn't turn out as nice as I liked on the bottom, but that's okay because that's okay it's mixed media, right? And then I might do just another one right here, and you won't see it as much, but I want a little bit to show up. Perfect, just like that. And then I was thinking I could apply just a little bit of that yellow over top just to give it a little something. Pop of color. Randomness. Love that. And it kind of turns green, which is really, really funky. Ooh, I love, love that, love, love, love. 
And because this one didn't turn out so great, I think the yellow will give it a little bit more depth and dimension. Okay, just like that. Oh, fabulous. Okie dokie, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a quick dry and come right back. As I look at this page, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, 80s is in or something because I, these are not my usual colors, you guys, but I think it's so much fun to play with. Um, so my favorite thing to use, which I'm shaking right now, is this um, Liquitex uh, Professional Acrylic Ink, and it's an extra fluid ink. I think that's what they call it. What do they call it? It's like super fluid ink, okay? And so I love to play with it and do splash marks. So it has a little dropper, and I'm just going to go ahead and create random splashes on my page. Okay. And if it doesn't quite splash the way I want it to, ooh, I love how that dripped. And then I can go ahead and play with them a little bit. Okay. And then once I like that, then I can go ahead and dry it up. Okay, so I'll be right back. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, what I'm gonna be using is, I'm gonna be using this little saying right here that, um, by Glitz, it's called Every Day is an Adventure, which is so pretty and I just, I love it. That's, that's my inspiration behind the colors. But I kinda want it to pop out a little bit more. So what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use Super Heavy Gesso by Liquitex and I'm just gonna apply it very randomly. But I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a background to kind of sit on and I'm using a kitchen spatula. How fun is that you guys? And it kind of tones it down a little bit but if I put it down, I'm not going to do it quite yet, I want it to be dry. It'll really pop out. So that's kind of the effect I'm going for. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of white kind of here and there. Ooh, look at that. That was not dry which is totally okay. I'm gonna dry it up, and now I got some black in my gesso. Not good. Make sure you dry, you guys, otherwise it's gonna be awful. Okay, and just random spots here and there. Okay, just like that. Fabulous. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give this a dry. Now, super heavy gesso takes a little bit longer than um, your regular gesso to dry, so, um, just, you know, you could also use modeling paste. The thing about using modeling paste is that you won't, it's not as white. So I find that for these type of projects, I like to use super heavy gesso. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and dry this and come right back. Okay, so now that it's somewhat dry, at least this side is, see how much better it pops out? Now that it's got the white, now you're thinking, how am I gonna put this? Because it's kind of that acrylic page. So I've got some washi tape right here, and I think this one, you guys, I found at Michael's, I'm not joking. I found it in, um, when I was in Seattle, I believe, and it came in this roll of three, just like this. So um, I, I have no idea how much it was, but I just thought it was so cool. I love the black and white. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it just like that, and you can just rip it, okay? So I really love the randomness of this washi tape. And then I think I'm going to do all four sides, but I'm going to do it so that it kind of sticks out just like that. Ta-da! And one more. Perfect. And what I'd like to do, because I want it to kind of go together, if you say, if you will, I'm going to just put a couple random spots of, oh see this one's not dry, of washi tape going along the page. And if it's a little bit wet, just like that. And then maybe one more coming down here, just like that. I'll cut those pieces off and then maybe a couple on the bottom here. One and then a little bit of a longer one coming about right here. Fabulous, and then it kind of blends together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut those little pieces off so that they don't look off. 
Last but not least, I'm going to use my Faber-Castell Gelato, and this is the black, and it's kind of like a lipstick form. So you can go ahead and apply it right to the edge here, just like so. And what's really beautiful about gelatos is you can go ahead with your finger and blend it. Especially if your surface has gesso on it, which my surface does. And I'm not sure I said that at the beginning of the video, but I did pre-gesso my surface so that my paint goes on a little bit better. Okay, so see how it just kind of brings that page together. And so you can just go ahead and blend with your finger. Oh, and you can also use water, actually, if you wanted to. But I don't want to add any water to my page, so I'm just using, and a little bit of it is not dry right there, which is why it turned a little bit gray. Okay, and just like that. And it just kind of brings the page together. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And blending. And I can take my clips off. And the reason I use the clips is because my book is so overloaded, it kind of holds my book down. Okay. Just like so, and then a little bit on the bottom maybe a little bit on the sides. I know it's a little bit white here and that's what happens with coil notebooks or art, uh, art journals but I'm okay with the look. I totally don't mind. So that is it my friends. Thank you so much for watching. I'll have all the details of the products that I used today on my blog so go check it out. My link will be below. Blah, blah. My link will be below. Talk to you guys later. Bye bye.